What is good, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about the winner only Tesla stock that you should be looking out for the future. I'm also going to do some in depth technical analysis and give you guys my price prediction for tomorrow based off the charts are showing, based off the data is suggesting. I'm also going to break down some very important headlines that just came out for Tesla that will affect how we move for tomorrow and break down how they may affect the price performance for this week. Now, before I break anything down, before I talk about the overall market and how it may affect Tesla as well, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. And the best part is, any could be a free Tesla share. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just five days. Check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So to start off this video, I wanted to talk about something Elon Musk mentioned. He did wish everyone a very Merry Christmas, and he did actually post a picture of his dog, his Shiba Inu, right over there. So a very, very nice tweet from Elon Musk. And looking at his Twitter, I haven't actually seen him talk about Tesla very much over the last a week or so so there isn't really a whole lot to say about him from that end but there are other very important things we have to discuss now from a technical standpoint obviously tesla is very very oversold and it has been dropping and very very underperforming relative to the markets because of the fact that we're getting hit by bad news over and over again now, over the weekend, we had more bad news that came out for Tesla investors, and this is actually increasing the odds of Tesla just continuing to trade sideways in this zone and maybe breaking down a little bit more based off the news. And what is the news? Well, to start off, we actually had uh, another shutdown at the Shanghai plant, and this was amidst the big surge in the cases over there however tesla did not mention the reason behind that so it's very important to note that now i did mention previously that i don't expect this to be extremely horrible like the end of the world because this shutdown is actually going to now last until january 2nd as of right now but tesla did mention that because of the big increases in production capabilities in shanghai it actually should not hurt them meeting their goals for the end of the year so that's the reason why there is still some hope but i do believe that i don't truly know if that's going to be the case right we don't truly know if tesla is going to meet these production uh, demands these expectations and that's why we still have to be very very cautious now just to give you guys some good numbers about this tesla delivered 343,000 cars in q3 of 2022 with production at 365,000, and in total that basically puts tesla at about uh, as of Q3 2022, they had about 930,000 cars in total production with 936,000 in deliveries. Now, for a 50% growth target on each, they need to produce over almost 1.4 million cars and deliver 1.404 million for the deliveries for 2022. Now, seeing Tesla add these potential uh, actual numbers for the entire year so far they need basically 465,000 cars produced and 495,000 deliveries for this year to meet their expectations and I can say with confidence that it's very unlikely and this analyst actually gave us a 1% chance at actually meeting delivery expectations because of the big drop in demand for Q4 and even parts of Q3 now this is very significant because the reason why this is scaring some investors is because they believe this is going to continue into 2023 and tesla may not be performing as well as some people want it to especially when the next deliveries report comes out however when it comes to production seeing the big upgrades that were being made in shanghai there is still hope and they're actually giving tesla a 70 percent chance of meeting production expectations that would be still very good for the stock price but the problem is seeing demand come down is not the best of things now what i do want to mention is the fact that shanghai is just an absolute monster i do believe because of shanghai 
it's very likely Tesla will meet production expectations. And the big, or I would say minor concern is the fact that Giga Berlin is a little bit slower than expected when it comes to them ramping up production. So hopefully they make up for it and hopefully they meet these expectations because in order for Tesla stock to start performing at a pretty decent level or maybe seeing some improvement for the start of 2023 temporarily, we need some good numbers. We need it. If we fail... It's not going to be very good. Now, anyways, for this week, when it comes to the markets, I did notice a big surge in the put buying, at least as of recent. And we do have a 2.14 put to call ratio for Friday. So that does increase the odds of the market makers pushing the markets up temporarily. And hopefully this does affect the overall market. Now, the real question is, will this affect Tesla? I will talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Now, when it comes to China, there has been some concerning news that came out. Tesla's, uh, not Tesla, China sent 71 warplanes and seven ships towards Taiwan in 24 hours. As of right now, What's good is nobody really got injured. There's no reports about them actually invading. This could just be a warning, and it does lead to lots of concerns. Now, I just want to note, okay, if you are watching this video, it is being recorded in the past compared to when you're watching and compared to when the market actually opens for Tuesday. Now, the market's closed for Monday, of course, in commemorance of Christmas. It's going to open on Tuesday. If this escalates and there actually is an invasion, okay, the stock market is going to crash. Spy is going to crash. People are going to capitulate. They're going to panic. Tesla is going to crash. Everything is going to crash if this actually happens. As of right now, it has not happened. So assuming that there is not an invasion, they're just like warning. They're just, you know, sending these uh, uh, these weapons, these warships all around the place just as a warning, just to show their own strength and really make a statement, then there is still hope for the market to continue to push temporarily. But like I said before, please be very cautious when things like this are going on. Now, the news is just all over the place. Tesla is shutting down in Shanghai plant, this and that. I mean, Tesla mentioned this will not really stop them from meeting expectations. They, they still have the capability of producing a ton of cars. But at the same time, I mean, this is not good news for Tesla investors because it will actually technically slow down their overall productivity. So please be very careful. I know lots of shorts are going to pounce on this. They like to manipulate Tesla. And it's just all part of their games. That's part of why Tesla has been really underperforming for this year. Looking at its price pairs ratio, this is the worst Tesla performance we ever had from the past couple of years. Since 2020, we never saw Tesla underperform this much. And seeing how much this thing is dropping relative to SPY and the QQQ, it's not the best of signs. There's no clear sign of a bounce just yet. It is trying to base where its support is. I'm going to talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Uh, right here, we're seeing lots of net volume around this 120 zone. Tesla is trying to hold it but there's no guarantee it will if more shorts begin to pile in now tuesdays are historically actually green only 50 percent of the time for tesla so it's pretty much 50 50 for tomorrow on a historical basis so we'll have to just wait and see how that really goes but notice the short interest this thing has been going up pretty hard as the shorts are starting to pile into test they're starting to try to bring this thing down and they are going to be pretty relentless as time goes on any minor piece of news is going to lead to an explosion they're going to take whatever news they can and use it against tesla so be very careful the shorts are very strong they're very mean and this does not mean that Tesla is going to zero. What this means is Tesla may continue to underperform for an, a longer period of time. But when it recovers, maybe if we're talking about mid-2023, maybe 2024. When Tesla recovers, it is going to outperform the market. It's going to squeeze extremely hard. Okay, that's the good thing. If you want to interpret it that way about the heavy shorting that's going on, if you continue to push Tesla down, it's like bringing and holding a slingshot back because when it recovers it's going to be crazy it's going to be incredible so if you give up now you could actually miss out on the gains that are going to be made in the future i just want to put it out there not financial advice and as far as news goes uh we are still seeing lots of these sell big sell orders by the insiders so far and we are seeing more negative pieces of news so please be very cautious now let's talk about the technicals i know i've been talking a lot about the news what do i see in the markets what's interesting about spy to start us off 
we had this literally straight up selling pressure to the downside with very little reactions to the upside. We went from 410 all the way down to 374 with a very small reaction. I believe that we are quite oversold on SPY. We dropped too much in a short period of time. And it's looking like we're trying to bounce right here because what tends to happen in the markets is the shorts are very intelligent. Smart money is intelligent. And I say this because they're not fools that started shorting down here. They did not start shorting at 374 on SPY. No, they were shorting up here at 410 to 408. They were shorting way up here. They let the market come down pretty hard. And what happened was, <coughs> excuse me, sorry guys. What happened was once the market came down, okay, all the way down to these levels, they start covering their positions. They start closing their positions. They start securing profits. And then they start buying into these companies. They start buying lots of shares to hedge. Why? Because they want the market to bounce a bit. They want there to be some relief here and there so that they could re-enter their short positions up here somewhere. That's what their plan is. And that's what I believe they are going to be doing, especially with the high put to call ratio. This incentivizes market makers to push the markets up a bit. So I believe SPY is going to push up for this 385 level, maybe go to 390 over the next couple of days, maybe a little higher than that, so that the shorts could re-enter their positions and start shorting us down. The rally is going to be artificial if it does come. And I say this because tech is not leading the way. It's not a typical rally. That's why the QQQ is underperforming relative to SPY. QQQ looks like it bounced off 262. It's going to continue pushing. We have a nice gap up here. I could see this thing fill the gap and see the 270s relatively soon, which will be relatively good for tech. The same could be said about Apple. I do believe Apple is set for a bounce. We have an inverse head and shoulders like formation. It wants to keep going. And hopefully we can see this thing go for its gap fill in that mid 130 level. So 135 around there, very possible for Apple. The dollar index is basically just very close to its key demand zone. I expect it to kind of hang out around here temporarily, maybe for another week or so, maybe one to two weeks before this thing starts popping and the market starts crashing going into 2023. So be very careful with the dollar index. You have to be very cautious. It still is respecting a falling wedge-like pattern. Uh, as far as the VIX goes, this thing is very close to its demand zone. I expect this to be pretty sideways and boring, range between the 20s to 19 or so zone. Very, very boring. But then once 2023 comes, I expect the VIX to bounce. And the VIX is going to start pushing and pushing and pushing, hitting that 27 zone, then it going back to the 30s. And the stock market is likely going to crash. Okay, so I, ex I expect January to be a not the best of months. I think January is going to see lots of red. Please be very, very careful. That is going to affect Tesla too. As far as the 10-year Treasury yield goals goes, excuse me, it's going to be very, very similar. I expect lots of sideways action here, but eventually it's going to start pushing up as we start to see assets being reallocated into less risky stocks so away from the stocks is where the money is going to go more into the yields and i do expect some moves like that so for tesla what the heck is going on this thing is very oversold that's the first thing i wanted to mention we did actually drop on relatively high volume which is a very bearish signal now out of the last 10 days nine of them were red days for tesla in a normal market this would be super oversold and we need to see a balance in the opposite direction however because of the manipulation, because of the heavy shorting we're seeing on Tesla and the perpetual negative news catalysts that just keep on coming out again and again and again, it's making it very difficult for Tesla to continue to bounce, especially because of Elon Musk selling in the past. That did play a role in Tesla coming down to these levels. Now, what's good, good about Elon Musk is he mentioned that he's not going to be selling any more of these shares until 2025. However, despite him saying that, Tesla did not even react to the upside. It still had a red day afterwards. And what's happening is we have a very key demand zone between 20 and 21. So this zone right here, let me just highlight this real quick. So around this zone, we are seeing some buyers stand. They're trying to defend their positions. And I believe Tesla is going to be fighting for this level very, very soon. Now, if the market bounces, it is possible for Tesla to bounce, but the problem is the negative news makes it very difficult, okay? So I'm going to be very cautious. 
very, very cautious when playing this thing. Let me first talk about the more bullish and then bearish possibilities than what I believe is going to happen. If Tesla bounces, okay, and it's very hard to tell exactly when it will because there's no true sign of it just yet. This thing has just been selling off almost every day. So if it bounces, Tesla has resistance. First off, it's going to be fighting this channel around this 26.5 area. If it breaks that, this thing could fly up to about 130. And if it breaks 130, there's 136. Once again, it's going to be pretty hard to get there, but it is still possible. If Tesla is bearish, if there's more bad news, let's just say something happens, what's going to happen is Tesla's going to fight for 121 to 120. If Tesla fails, if it breaks below this, it's going to crash down to 117. And, if, and that's probably not going to hold us that well. The really strong support is going to be around 110. So please be very careful. This thing still has more potential downside. What do I think is going to happen now that I said this? Well, it's very hard to tell. It depends on the news that comes out tomorrow as well. So far, the news is not helping Tesla with the news about the shutdown in Shanghai. I believe Tesla is going to come down a bit, maybe retest one to one, trade a little bit sideways. And I can't really tell you if it's going to break below one to one to one twenty just yet. If it does, watch one seventeen. If it doesn't, it should actually hold and trade a little bit sideways around here. Now, if you consider the fact that the QQQ Apple and SPY might bounce, there is a good chance Tesla's going to try to hold these levels, maybe not crash just yet, maybe just hold sideways for some time, despite how much it has been, you know, uh, underperforming, it looks like it's trying to base around 121 to 120. So please anticipate and be ready for anything that's about to come. I'm going to predict that Tesla's going to try to hold this level, maybe just trade a very boring and sideways for some time. It may even try to base around 121 and just give us lots of boring price action. That's what I'm seeing as of right now. Let's see if it could it could actually try to bounce. If it does, that's going to be a pretty decent sign. I don't expect it to be too violent though, because remember, the market is not in the best of states. The market will likely bounce this week, but if it does, it's not going to last forever. It may last a couple of days, may last a week, but once 2023 comes, it's not going to be pretty, guys. So please be ready for that. For Tesla, like I said, I expect this thing to just trade in a very sideways, boring uh, way because we have demand around 121 to 120. We're going to retest that most likely and just go back and forth. If we break below it because of the news, then this thing could crash to 117. There's no sign of that happening just yet. So we'll just have to wait and see. But until then, that's basically what I have for this video. So watch your news headlines very carefully. Watch your technical indicators very carefully. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Tesla to the moon because the long term future is still very, very bright. I'm still very bullish for the long term. And peace out.